open link. Is that okay? Yes, we can see you too. Yeah, okay. Now, Abuna, if you can rotate your phone, you don't have to touch anything. Just rotate your phone, it will be great. Yes, there you go. Now, Abuna, one more thing. If you can place your phone in front of you and maybe place something behind it, in that case, I think it would be more comfortable for you and we can see you more properly. It is possible, surely. <laughs> Yes, that's great. Abuna, one last thing. If you can come a little bit closer to the camera. Is that okay? Perfect. Perfect. Yes, I'm Perfect. very obedient. <laughs> Thank you for accommodating with us. Yeah. Thank you, Abuna, for being with us today. Now, we've heard that you had some difficult time with your health with COVID-19, and we truly hope that you feel better. We'll move on to the interview now. Now, your school has been designated as an HUPLP peace school. Now, what made you to decide to designate your school as a peace school? It's very simple. We got the beautiful visit of Mr. Manhe Lee. We were very happy to have him. We celebrated that with most of our students. Hundreds of them were gathered in the auditorium to listen to Manhe Lee. And he decided to offer us this privilege if we agree. Surely we agreed gratefully. That's how we became the first Peace Academy for HWPL. Thank you, Abuna. Now, if you can recollect some of your memories to that day of designation of HWPL Peace Academy, um, how was the event like? Was anything memorable to you? It was after I visited uh, Seoul and attended the big peace meeting. I invited the Reverend Manhe Lee to come and visit us. He was delighted to say, yes, I am coming. And in fact, he came around Christmas. I don't remember the exact date. So we received them very warmly, with much affection, with much solemnity, and with many people as possible. So we gathered some of our students, the, those who are able to understand English, and there are many, there are hundreds. And we gathered in the auditorium, and Manhe Lee came very graciously, spoke to the students, and they all applauded so warmly, they were so delighted. Afterwards, we had lunch together. And in that time, he told me, do you agree to be the first Peace Academy in for the WSPL? I said, I am honored to do that. And that's how it started. Abuna, we've heard that on that day that you installed a plague for HBPL Peace Academy, right? It is still there. In our auditorium, in the conference hall, there's a big plague of WPL. Uh, hanging there. Sure. We are proud of that. I wish yeah. you could come and see that. Okay, so what do you think is the significance of being a First Peace Academy? It's most, first, it's a responsibility. It's a big responsibility to be faithful to the calling of the Reverend HWP, uh, the Reverend Manhe Lee. And it is a responsibility for me to get the children involved in that education for peace. This is in fact what we long for. That's what we yearn for, to have peace based on justice for us here, for Palestinians and for Jews alike. Abuna, oh, we've heard that you went through many obstacles in order for you to teach peace education in school. Now, we want to ask you, what made you to continue even after jumping over all these difficult hurdles? Why did you want to proceed teaching peace education in your school? We are convinced that our future depends on the good relations with the majority, that's it, the Jews. And instead of taking weapons, we take peace to approach the others. We have been doing that since 1982. 
But when you came in, it became more, more centered, more important for us. Yeah? We need always to be clear. It's impossible to speak about peace in this country for Palestinians without speaking about justice. Justice a, is an important requirement to have peace. So this is what is very critical for the official stance in Israel. They don't want us to speak about justice. So we are confused. What can we speak about peace if it's not on justice? So we have to consider justice as a way to peace and peace is a state of mind. Thank you, Avuna. Now, we want to ask you a question about uh, your activity involved with HUBPL, uh, WARP office, the World Alliance of Religious for Peace office that you participated in. Now, could you please share us some of your experiences in that interfaith dialogue? You mean here locally? Yes, yes. Interfaith committees exist here since very long time. I was sharing all the meetings we had on Zoom, and I was very, very pleased and honored to share the big meetings in Seoul. It was all kind of confirmation of what we believe, that peace is the main value that can help people to live humanly. <coughs> Are you all right, Abuna? I asked because I heard you coughing. It's the remaining of the coronavirus. Ah, uh, I see. Now, if you feel uncomfortable or fatigued during interview, please let us know. Yeah, okay. Now, when we heard about your condition with COVID-19, we were quite worried. Now, uh, Abuna, if you can share, how is the situation like in Israel? Well, now the situation is bad. The Omicron is, is attacking everybody. But we feel this contagion is not so severe on health situation. We, he, we live out of hope that very soon this COVID thing, this virus will disappear, but not completely. We need to get to use to live with it, but it's affecting everyone's life. Families are affected. Individuals are affected, government, institutions. Everyone feels an attack of this virus on the regular daily life. Now, Abuna, how is the situation with schools? It's lamentable, lamentable situation. Most of our schools are on, on, on home uh, uh, confinement. I think that two thirds of the children do not come to school. In some classes, we have two or three individuals. It's a very, very, very bad situation. Even our teachers, many of them, almost one third of the teachers are homebound now in confinement. Abuna, you're an educator, but at the same time, you're a religious leader, right? Right, exactly. So Right. So when it comes to the world peace, what do you think a role of religious leader is? A religious leader proceeds with his teaching, with his religious values. I'm a Christian and I'm Archbishop. I'm the head of the church in Israel, the Catholic Church in Israel. It is important to give guidelines to people to follow the values of their own religion, which calls to love the enemy, to forgive those who hurt you, to give more than to take. All these values are very important and they are not only religious values, they are human values, they are beyond religion. They are superhuman values. So it's different when a clergyman is an employee just to celebrate the office, the mass, the celebrations, or when a, a clergyman becomes a missionary, that means he teaches what he lives. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Abuna, if you need a cup of water, uh, you may take some time. 
No, no, we can continue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Abuna, if you can lower down your angle of the camera a little bit so that we can see more of um, you. A little bit more. Like that? Yes. Yes, I think we're good. Abuna, now we understand that you're an educator, also a religious leader, but also an author. Now, we want to hear from you about two of your books, A Blood Brother and We Belong to the Land. Could you please explain about these two books? Blood Brother is translated in your language. You know that. It's translated in your language. It has been translated in 29 languages. The last translation I got came from China. I don't understand any word, but I can pick on the cover page, Elias Shakur, Blood Brothers. That's all. Well, this is the story of my childhood. As a child who was suddenly facing the violence of the soldiers who destroyed our home, who deported us away, who left us without anything but the clothes we had on us. So I tell the story without any anger, without any accusation, but with an appeal for human beings not to produce more refugees. It's a very hard situation to be a refugee with no home, with no land, with no uh, finance help. It's very, very difficult. So it's due to my father and mother's education for peace and for dignity that I grew up respecting the other and forgiving those who have been hurting us. We remember everything, but we do not grudge against. We don't want to take revenge. We want to repair the evil done. And the second book, We Belong to the Land, the title says everything, that the land of Israel does not belong to the Jews. Palestine does not belong to the Palestinians, but Palestinians and Jews have to learn how to belong together to this land. If they do not learn how to belong to the land and continue claiming ownership on the land, they will all go towards a very big conflagration will kill each other. So we have to know only in sharing the land together, we can opt for survival together. And that's what I want. I wrote many other books. During the COVID year, when we were homebound for one whole year, I wrote three books in Arabic. The one is entitled a vision, not a road map. The vision is the vision of your religious philosophy, spirituality. The second book is to him to grow and to me to diminish. It's about Jesus Christ. And the third one is about the Beatitudes. What we call, we Christians, we call the Sermon on the Mount. And the Beatitudes are the credentials of every Christian. I wish you, you read Arabic. I will send them to you immediately. Thank you, Abuna, for the introduction of your books. Now, we are very curious about your goal and vision towards world peace. Now, what do you have planned to do to achieve this world peace? Oh, if I can answer that. I want to do everything possible but I can do few things only. I don't forget that I'm 83 years old. I'm always at the end of my life. But as long as I live, I will continue to preach the love of the enemy and the dignity of every human being. 
it's not only something ideological, it's something de facto in the life. When in the morning I see Jews coming to my office, I respect them as my brothers, as my beloved brothers and sisters. When Muslims came back after that, they received the same respect, the same attention. This is what I want our young people learn, to respect the other because he has the same dignity of humanity. I have very little ambitions. This is all I want to, to do. I want them to be able to give a smile of hope for each other. Thank you, Abuna. Now, more and more I listen to your story, it brings me to think that there's many commonalities with you and Chairman Lee of HGBPL, how both of you devoted your life to uh, bring better future for our future generations and also transcending different religions to bring peace and make peace together. Now, I know that you've met him only for a short amount of time, but has that impacted your life? Well, it has surely an impact. It's a very, very important man. It's a personality uh, who is working for peace. It encourages me to continue believing that there are good human beings, that there are people who believe in their faith, in their, in their life, in their actions. They believe in the importance of respecting each other and of creating peace. It has surely an impact. Thank you, Abuna. Now, our next question is about an activity of HGBPL, Work Office, the Interfaith Dialogue, which I understand that you also participated with different religious leaders. Now, here, I understand that uh, different religious leaders discuss based on scriptures to find commonalities and also to find what true religion is. And idea is to come together with this true religion. I want to ask you, from a perspective of religious leaders, do you think this is a possible? It's a good idea. Whether it's possible or not, we have to wait to see it practiced. I think we have to accept that in every religion, <clears throat> there are some good values. No religion possesses all the truth, no. But if we can survive together with what is common without rejecting what's individually different, that might be very helpful. Do you understand me? Yes. I do. Thank you, Abuna. Now, before we ask you the last question, if you could come a little bit closer to the camera so that we can see you better. Thank you. Now, our last question is that there are people uh, who are somewhat ignorant or somewhat frustrated or some who are against the idea of world peace. Now, if you were to deliver a message to them, what would it be? First of all, I would like to ask them to give me a better alternative. And peace is not a Christian value, a Muslim or a Buddhist value. Peace is the need of every creation, of every human being. Peace means to help the poor to come out from their poverty and to become self-independent. There will be always people who reject peace. There are people like Daesh, like ISIS, who believe that they have to kill those who do not share their faith. This is the worst thing that can be done. If I, might, if I may meet with a fanatic Muslim who does not believe that Christians have to live, I need to show him that I am very eager to give him the possibility to live and to convince them that I don't want to die. This is the elementary things. There is a golden rule that has to be respected by everybody. No way out. Do to others what you want others to do to you. This is the golden rule. If anybody accepts that, I'm ready to go with him as long as he wants me to go. Thank you, Abuna. Now, that is the end of our interview today. Uh, however, we wanted to uh, once again tell you how thankful we are that you were in a 
difficult situation with your condition, but you gave us 100% focus and all the insights as an educator, as a religious leader, and also as a writer. It's very impressive and I was re very, very inspired by it. Once again, thank you. And I truly want to show you that we have full respect towards the work that you've done for peace. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm very grateful <clears throat> to have this friendly relations with many among you in, in Seoul. I love you a lot and I wish you all the best. And we share so much together. We are all human beings. We are all men and women. We all yearn to live with dignity and with respect. And I hope we can achieve that together. And thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Thank you, and please stay well until we see each other next time. I hope you have a great day. Thank you, thank you.